study of daratumumab, the anti-CD38 antibody, in a large prospective randomized trial, the Pollock study in multiple myeloma, and Dr. Meletios Dimopoulos from Athens will present the data in a couple of slides. Good morning. So this is an open-label randomized phase three study of daratumumab with lenalidomide and dexamethasone, DRD, versus lenalidomide and dexamethasone, RD, in relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma, the Pollux trial. All myeloma cells express an <coughs> antigen called CD38, so this antigen was uh, an appropriate target and uh, we have daratumumab, which is a fully human IgG monoclonal antibody that binds to uh, CD38. With this uh, binding, uh, daratumumab exerts uh, several mechanisms of action. Uh, there is a direct uh, antimyeloma effect uh, by inducing apoptosis, phagocytosis, activating complement, and this direct effect, we believe, uh, is explaining the rapid action of daratumumab. On the other hand, there is an effect on the immune system, so daratumumab is able to activate uh, immune cells, such as uh, CD4, CD8 positive cells, and these cells attack myeloma uh, in another way. And this immune effect of daratumumab may explain the depth of response and the durability of response. Daratumumab as a single agent has been approved by FDA and EMEA based on a large cohort of patients who were refractory to multiple treatments and with single agent daratumumab there was a 30% response rate the majority of these patients were heavily pretreated. They were resistant to immunomodulatory agents, to proteasome inhibitors, and actually they had a pretty long survival. Also, daratumumab was combined with lenalidomide and dexamethasone, which is a standard treatment for relapsed myeloma, and in a phase two study, the data were quite promising. So this prompted the Pollux trial which uh, included patients with relapsed or refractory myeloma. These patients had at least one prior line of therapy and they were randomized on a one-to-one -one basis to receive either the standard of care, Lendex, or Lendex with daratumumab. More than 600 <coughs> patients were included in this trial and the primary endpoint was progression-free survival with secondary endpoints being overall survival, response rate, uh, and also assessment of minimal residual disease. This is the main finding of the study, and uh, this Kaplan-Meier curve, as you can see, indicates that there is a very significant improvement of the progression-free survival in favor of daratumumab. In the control arm, median is 18.4 months, it has not been reached uh, in the investigation alarm. The hazard ratio is 0.37, which means that there is a 63% reduction in the risk of progression or death for DRD versus RD. Furthermore, there is the highest ever response rate uh, seen in patients with relapsed or refractory myeloma. 93% of the patients achieved uh, at least a partial response, and even more importantly, 43% of the patients achieved a complete response. This uh, combination was uh, well tolerated. The uh, adverse events seen were mainly contributed to lenalidomide dexamethasone, and the allergic reactions were mild and usually occurred during the first course of daratumumab. Thus, this trial shows that the combination of daratumumab with lenalidomide and dexamethasone uh, is improving in a very dramatic way the progression-free survival of the patients treated, and also there is a trend for improved survival 
despite the short follow-up of the <coughs> study. The addition of daratumumab to lenalidomide and dexamethasone induces deep and durable responses, and data with minimal <coughs> residual disease indicate that we can achieve a minimal residual disease negativity status in a significant number of patients. Thus, the combination of daratumumab with lenalidomide and dexamethasone potentially is representing a new standard of care for relapsed or refractory myeloma patients with one prior treatment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question there. Hi, uh, Neil Osterweil with the Oncology Report and Hematology News. Uh, could you please speak, uh, uh, Professor Demopoulos, about the difference between the uh, populations in the CASTER trial and the Pollux trial? And did you present any of these data at ASCO? The CASTER trial was presented at ASCO, and it will be presented again here on Sunday. The Pollux trial has not been presented before. Uh, clearly, uh, there are differences in the patient population. Uh, in this trial, uh, patients who were refractory to lenalidomide were not included. 18% of the patients were pretreated with lenalidomide, but they should not be resistant to pomalidomide. Uh, in uh, the CASTOR trial, patients who were refractory to bortezomib were not included. In this trial, we have patients who are resistant, uh, exposed, and even 20% of them resistant to proteasome inhibitor. Also, another difference between the two trials is that in this, in this Pollux trial, in both arms, patients continue treatment until there was evidence of disease progression or an acceptable toxicity, whereas in the Castro trial, bortezomib and dexamethasone uh, was stopped after a certain number of courses, and then patients continued on teratumumab. So we view these uh, as uh, different trials, but both of them highlight uh, the significant impact uh, of adding daratumumab uh, in what is considered today a standard regimen for patients with relapsed myeloma, bortezomib dexamethasone, or lenalidomide dexamethasone. Thank you. So you talk about a standard of care, presenting your regimen, a standard of care. Is it going to be the standard of care? Uh, well, I uh, would like to see it that way. Yes. <laughs> yes. And are there any signs of patients that are being cured in the experimental arm? Because the PFS curve seems to reach a plateau. How about that? Yes, uh, this is an excellent point. Although uh, we believe that in the relapse setting of myeloma, it is unlikely to achieve a cure rate, uh, we are optimistic that uh, there will be a sizable number of patients that will remain without progression for many months. Already from single agent daratumumab, where uh, this patient population is far more uh, heavily pretreated, uh, there are patients who are uh, without progression for several years. So we are very optimistic, and especially based on the fact that we see uh, MRD negativity uh, in uh, a significant number of patients, which is also very unusual for the relapse setting of myeloma. Final question? If not, thank you again for this. Thank you very much.